Can I speak to someone at service, please? Of course. Hang on one second. Thank you. Hi, hey Marty. Say, I've got a 2018 CF Moto U-Force, and I'm just trying to figure out how much it would cost to come in and have the initial valve adjustment done. Uh, you're looking at uh, it's an hour and a half of time, roughly, to do the valve inspection, so figure $180. Okay, and that includes any adjustments they need to make, correct? No, $180 is just for the inspection. Taking it apart, inspecting it, putting it back together. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Hey, do you want to stay up to date on the latest ATV trails, reviews, and news? Obviously you do. So hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss our future videos. That's a lot of money to pay the dealer to do something that's really not too hard. So with that being said, I've never actually done a valve adjustment before. So if you have and you're like, I know how to do this, I'm just going to click off this video, you would honestly be doing me a real solid if you watched the video and, and provided any feedback on ways that I could have done it either faster or, or better, whatever it may be. And if you're watching this video because you're about to do this and you want to know how, make sure when the video is over, you check the comments below so that you can learn from, quite frankly, people that are probably more experienced than me. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is get these seats out of the way. All right, so I want to cover this as fast as possible, but also as well as possible to give you the most information I can on how to complete this. Now, if you're watching and you don't even have this specific model, I'd still recommend watching the entirety of the video simply because it's going to at least give you a better idea of, of some of the pieces that you're probably going to have to consider taking out if you do, in fact, have a side by side. So getting going right off the bat here, we're going to go ahead and take the seats off and we're going to need them off later anyway. It's just a great spot to start because one, they're, they're really just kind of in the way and it's just going to make the whole process easier. So one thing to note with these is these pins, they were not really easy to get out. So your best bet is just gonna wiggle it back and forth and, and just pull on that pin. You can see there, it's got some rust and all that on it. Uh, you know, when I put it back in, I, I went ahead and lubed it, but in, in this instance, just to get it out, it, it might take a little bit of work depending on how old your machine is. And this machine's only been out for, you know, less than one full season of riding. And that's, that's how, how rough they already are to get out. And once you do this with one seat, Obviously, you're just going to go ahead and scoot on and do pretty much the same to the other seat. One of the benefits to this is some of the screws and rivets that you actually do have to remove to get the seats out easier are going to need to come out later anyway, so you're really just shortening future steps. All right, so once we get the seats out, we're going to start working on the center console. Now, this is really just the cover for the air filter. It's pretty easy. You've got the snaps on each side, almost like a rubber band. You're going to get those off, and then you kind of just got to wiggle it, and it, it, it more comes up and then out towards the back but it might take a little bit of force to fully get it out. All right, so the next thing to do is get all of this out of the way. So we're gonna remove the air box, the shift lever, and this whole lower console. Now that's really not too hard. You'll notice there's like three screws on each side, and then I believe six rivets total that you'll have to come out to be able to remove all this. As for the shift lever, that's pretty easy. There's really just one screw in there, and then you twist it off, and then the air box, you'll see, is pretty easy as well. All right, so for the air box, there's a couple things you're gonna have to remove. You've got that main mounting bracket right up front, and then you're gonna wanna make sure you move the hoses for the air filters. There's a couple of them, as you can see here, that have to come out. And then there's this mounting bracket in back. There's two bolts that are kinda hidden back there. I didn't even find those right away. But you're gonna wanna make sure, obviously, you take those out as well, because they are securing the air filter in place. And again, while we're doing this in the U-Force, a lot of this process is gonna be rather similar on, on many side-by-sides. -side. So something to keep in mind, even if you don't have a U-Force. All right, so now we've got a few bolts where the center console is hooked in that we got to get out, and then we got to get these rivets out. There's a lot of these rivets that you end up taking out during this entire process, and uh, I don't like them. All right, I just got to waste a quick second to say, I don't know what sick son of a... Who invented these and why? I freaking hate these stupid rivets. I hate them. I, don't, I hate them. I don't know why we use them. I don't know why there are a thousand of them on everything, but I freaking hate them. Not to mention the fact, like, am I doing something wrong with taking them off? I mean, it's it's not easy. And I just feel like, like, that's why they charge you so much for these types of things. Because the mechanic's got to spend 40 hours just getting rivets off the machine. Like, is there an easier way that I'm just not tracking? Moving on. All right, so I actually missed two screws back here for this lower console that have to be taken out before we actually pull it up. All right, so we got all the screws and rivets out of the lower console. Now, one thing you are going to want to make sure is you pull the e-brake up because you're going to want that up and back to just basically be able to get that out a little bit easier. 
All right, so now we need to remove the gas tank. And to get the gas tank out, we're gonna have to remove some of the plastic you're seeing here. Now, I got kind of lazy, to be honest, and I didn't want to take the whole thing out. So as you can see, I just removed some of the necessary bolts required. Now, what you are seeing here is the bolts that are holding the brackets in for the gas tank. There are two of them, and when we switch views, you'll kind of be able to see them draped across the top. So you gotta remove this bar that's used to hold the seat in properly. And then here's one of the brackets right here. There's just two of them. They come out pretty easy. And once you get that out, you're gonna have a vent line towards the back here that you're gonna have to remove, and then two on the actual center of the fuel tank itself. Now, obviously, the less fuel you have in your tank when you go to do this, the easier it's gonna be to remove this. So in this case, I was lucky, and I think I actually had less than a quarter tank, which definitely helped get that out of there. All right, this needs to come out so that we can properly turn the camshaft to find our top dead center, which we'll talk about more in a minute. All right, this we're removing is actually the crankshaft piston sensor, and again, we'll talk about why you need to remove this more in a minute. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and take out the spark plug. Now we're gonna start with the rear cylinder. And just so you don't get too confused, when we start talking about the rear cylinder, it's actually the one closest to the front of the vehicle. Okay, so the way the engine sits in the machine versus the way they're actually labeled is somewhat confusing. But we're starting with the rear cylinder and that's up front. So we'll go ahead and remove the hose here to get this out of the way and then we'll remove the valve cover. All right, so here we go. This is where the bread and butter is at. Now we are talking about, so now we're looking at the valves and what we have to do is line up top dead center. You have to line up top dead center properly in order to do this adjustment correctly. Now what you wanna do is line up these printed marks and they're, you see the white line, but there's actually some engraved marks that are sort of hard to see through the camera. You're trying to line up those marks on the camshaft timing gear so that they are parallel to the cylinder head base, which is right below it there. And, and to get a better understanding of this, the picture in the service manual will help you with that as well. Another thing you can check, which did not work for me, but it is in the service manual, is we took out that piston sensor. When you look in that hole, there's supposed to be a marking that'll help show you when it's properly lined up. This machine did not have the proper marking on it, so it was not very useful. So what we're doing right now is we're checking the 0 .055, okay? And that barely even fits in there. And when we go up to the 0 .08, it doesn't fit at all. So we know this one has to be loosened because the intake valves on these need to be between 0 .06 and 0 .14. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen the nut and the screw and just back it out enough to give it the proper amount of space so that a feeler gauge between 0 0.06 and 0 0.14 fits in there. Now, again, if you have a different machine, you're gonna need to look in the service manual or even the owner's manual may have it and you need to know exactly what specifications you need. So I got it in there, right? I found the right one and, and we basically, we're gonna wanna try and find it so there's enough drag that the feeder gauge, you can put it in there and you can still kind of, you can feel it, right? When you go back and forth, you're gonna wanna feel that drag on there, which is why I keep kind of playing with it a little more. I'm trying to get just, just enough so there's some drag, but it fits, okay? And then once I think I find the right spot, I'm gonna hold that screw there and then I'm gonna get my wrench back out and I'm gonna tighten it down. And then of course, always double check your work. All right, so that one still fits in there good, which it should. And now we're gonna try one that's out of specifications and make sure that it does not fit in there. And it does, okay? So again, that's why you check your work. So once again, I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna loosen this up. So again, you're gonna loosen that nut up, turn the screw just a little bit, tighten it back down and check it again. Okay, so it fits. There's a little bit of drag, which is good. And now we've checked a feeder gauge that shouldn't fit and it doesn't. All right, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other one. And to save some time, I'm not gonna show you the other one. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the other side, which is the exhaust valves. Now we're still on the same cylinder. We're just working on the exhaust valves, okay? So again, I'm checking one that fits and it's good. And I'm gonna check one that doesn't fit or isn't supposed to fit and it does not. And the exhaust valves were actually good. So we didn't have to touch those at all. So now we're gonna move to the other cylinder head and work on those valves. And again, I'm gonna repeat the exact same process. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this was the first time I'd ever done this. So huge shout out goes out to the dudes with CF Moto owners and that's owners with a Z because they were a massive help because I went on there with a couple questions once I actually exposed these valves and there were tons of people that came in with answers to my questions and just a huge help. So again, massive thank you to all those guys. All right, so as we continue on to the other valves, again, we're working on the intake. This one was 0 0.08 and it fit, which is good. And then this one here, was 0 0.10. And again, that fit, because remember, this is supposed to be between, this is supposed to be between 0 0.06 and 0 0.14. So now we're gonna go up to 0 0.13, right? And 0 0.13 does not fit. So we know that this one is good to go. Now again, we're gonna repeat that on the other intake valve. And now we're gonna move over to the exhaust valves and do the exact same thing. 
so again, just to reiterate, the feeder gauge should fit snug and, and almost scrape against the screw a little bit or when it fits in there, but it, it shouldn't be excessively tight and it shouldn't be excessively loose. You should feel some drag in there. So in total here, we did this for eight valves, right? Four intake and four exhaust because you have four valves per cylinder and there's two cylinders. And out of the eight, we ended up adjusting two of them. All right, so the valve inspection and adjustment is complete. As you saw from the video, we actually did have to adjust a couple of them, which kind of surprised me because when I called the dealer, they basically told me that they almost never have to actually make adjustments on the initial inspection, which, all right, I mean, but when you think about how much it was gonna cost, so almost $200 just for the inspection and then more for them to adjust them, we just saved hundreds of dollars, right? Now, I will say, I had to take off more plastics than I thought I was gonna have to, but it wasn't overly complicated, just time consuming. But if you wanna save literally hundreds of dollars, this is easily something you could do on a Saturday on your own and save a ton of money. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't already. And, and, help to see you on the trail. After I put all this back together, of course. I gotta waste a second to say, I freaking hate these things. I hate them. I don't know who invented them, but you're a